Have you ever felt lonely, depressed, maybe a tad, uh, you know, anxious? then you're going to want to listen to the rest of this episode. Welcome back to the Travis Makes Friends podcast, where it is my mission to help you avoid loneliness, create quality friendships, and build a strong professional network. My name is Travis Chaplin. I believe that everything you want in life is on the other side of a great relationship. Uh, Every week on the show, going forward, um, we're going to have two episodes. Historically, we've been doing one a week for the last, I don't know, maybe year, year and a half. Um, now we're going to go up to two a week and the second episode is going to be a solo show. It's going to be me and you. Uh, so we have Travis makes friends, which is where I interview some of the new friends that I'm making. Uh, but now we're going to have this segment, which is make friends with Travis, where it's just going to be me and you getting to know each other a little bit more. Uh, we're talk about, um, uh, the skills, the how to's, the lessons, uh, the things that you need in order to be more bold, to communicate more clearly and effectively and to improve your relationships in every level, whether it's your relationship with yourself, your relationship with close friends and family, your inner circle, or it's your relationship uh, with a, with a, a professional network uh, that you want to, uh, you know, help with your career or mentor you to success in uh, whatever field you're trying to be successful in. So today we are talking all about loneliness, the whole reason for this show's existence. Um, Cause although we've been connected, you know, never been more connected um, uh, than we are right now. Ironically, we're also the loneliest that we've ever been, uh, which is pretty crazy. So, um, and in fact, it's gotten so bad, the U.S. Surgeon General released an entire report all about that, which is some of the things that we're going to go into on this episode today. So let's get to it. Oh, actually, almost forgot to take my uh, magic mind shot here. Um, yeah, this is one of those things that I don't podcast without these days. Um, oh, well, I'll tell you about it after I take it. All right, here we go. Yeah, so Magic Mind sends me these. Um, it's a mental performance shot. So it's uh, it's made from matcha, like the highest grade matcha possible. Um, it's got a bunch of other great stuff in it, agave, olive oil, ashwagandha, uh, cordyceps, lion's mane. I've done a fair amount of studying on these things, and basically this has every single one of the ingredients um, uh, that is necessary for uh, brain function, brain health. To me, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like getting a little boost, you know, and, and by the way, it doesn't replace my coffee. It has 55 milligrams of caffeine, which I genuinely appreciate because, you know, I, I like the ritual of drinking my black coffee. And if it had 250 milligrams of caffeine, then I wouldn't be able to have coffee on top of it. So it's like a great boost. It's like a, uh, yeah, a great brain boost. In addition to my coffee, I do not podcast without it anymore. Honestly, I like, I feel like when I podcast now, whether it's an interview or solo show or something like this, I'm at like a disadvantage if I don't take it rather than an advantage if I do take it. So um, listen, they actually have a limited time offer now for uh, listeners of the show. Uh, so it's going to get you up to 48% off your f- uh, first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase using code TravisC20 um, at checkout. Um, so you can claim that at magicmind.com slash TravisC20. Um, oh, and there's no risk. So they are so confident in the new formula that they have, which I have been raving about for a little while, um, that they will refund 100%, no questions asked, uh, for up to 100 days after buying. So go check it out. I prompt, like if you, if you do creative work at all, if you write, whether that's, you know, comedy writing or business writing, uh, whatever it is that you do in your creative endeavors, podcasting, YouTube, whatever, um, I I promise you, you're going to notice a difference in your like focus sessions when you're trying to get the best stuff out of your brain and onto paper or a Google Doc or something like that. So magicmind.com slash Travis C20. Now, back to the Surgeon General. I want to share some of the alarming parts of this report because there are some pretty crazy things about this. And frankly, when I started my show, it was called Build Your Network. It was, it was like seven years ago. It was strictly a podcast. We don't do anything on YouTube. And I was just talking to people about how to network better. Frankly, it was kind of a selfish thing. I wanted to know how to do it better because I never had any experience doing it. And uh, I did not know that over the years that it was going to lead me through this journey of trying to help people combat loneliness. And I didn't realize that it was this big of a problem. So um, yeah, uh, the first thing we're going to really emphasize here is that loneliness and social social isolation are really a massive problem. You know, people are lacking uh, social connection in a ton of different ways. Um, and uh, this this document that the U.S. Surgeon General put out uh, really just highlights some of the key research 
that was involved in putting this out as an actual health warning to the general public. Like this is not just like, you know, oh, a blog article on their website. This is a health warning from the U.S. Surgeon General to say like, hey, focus on this stuff because it's really important. Um, so uh, just to start things off, uh, sometimes loneliness and social uh, isolation can kind of be conflated and mixed together in one bucket, but they're not exactly the same. So uh, for our purposes, this is what this is how we define those. Social isolation is objectively having few social relationships, social roles, group memberships, and infrequent social interaction. Loneliness is a subjective internal state. It's the distressing experience that results from perceived isolation or unmet need between an individual's preferred and actual experience. So uh, the, the rest of the time that I'm talking, I'm going I'm to use the word loneliness more often than not, just because it's, uh, I think, you know, uh, more poignant than saying social isolation all the time. Um, but just know, like, if I'm, if I'm talking about this, that uh, I'm, I'm meaning both of them in conjunction together. So, um, the first thing, and probably the most obvious thing that, that, uh, uh, you would like think would happen is that loneliness can affect your mental health, obviously. Um, so there's, there's a couple of studies in here that I wanted to point out a systematic review of multiple uh, studies found that the odds of developing depression in adults is more than double among people who report feeling lonely often compared to those who rarely or never feel lonely. Furthermore, in older adults, both social isolation and loneliness have been shown to independently increase the likelihood of depression and anxiety. Um, plus, social isolation is arguably the strongest and most reliable predictor of suicidal ideation, attempts, and lethal suicidal behavior among samples varying in age, nationality, and clinical severity. So I don't think it comes as much of a surprise that loneliness is one of the root causes of depression, anxiety, and suicide, uh, which, which makes a lot of sense. And, and even, and social isolation can kind of play into those factors as well. Um, and the loneliness side to me is a little bit more alarming because it's less, um, it's less point, it's less, um, um, I guess measured because social isolation, if, if it's, if it's, if it's a, a matter of not being involved in as many communities or whatever it needs to be, then the prescription is kind of similar. It's like, Hey, go get connected, go find people that are in your world, that are in your circle, um, or that have similar interests and, uh, spend time with them. And, and, you know, it, it's not easy to, to do those things sometimes, especially as adults, um, in a, in a world that's very fragmented with a, you know, um, a emergence of virtual work and things, but at least it is simple directions. The thing that is more alarming to me is the loneliness part because loneliness, like I said before, it's a subjective internal state. Um, so it's a distressing experience results from perceived isolation, perceived isolation, which tells us that loneliness can be experienced even in the midst of being involved in several groups um, or an unmet need between an individuals preferred and actual experience. So just unmet expectations. Um, so that's way more subjective and it's going to vary from person to person and you can't just give like, Hey, this is the prescription. Uh, so that that's obviously, you know, really, really alarming. And, you know, in a, in their, their first world problems, you know, they, they are, uh, by definition, first world problems. I mean, these are things that are, uh, American privileges to experience, uh, depression, anxiety, and some of these, some of these things that a lot of us are experiencing these days enough to where inside out Two made, man, I don't know, uh, billions of dollars in the box office. Let's see um, what that was exactly. Um, box office. Since it's theatrical release on June 14, 2024, Inside Out 2 has grossed $652 million at the domestic box office and $1.03 in international markets for a worldwide total of $1.687 billion. It's all about anxiety. That's literally what the entire movie is about <laughs> because all of us are struggling with anxiety um, and depression. And apparently it's more than an American thing because it's a billion international markets too. So um, something that we're all experiencing, I guess. And, uh, but, but it is, it is a, a product of like, look, we're, we as humans, we're, we're wired to look for problems. And now that the first world, like we've solved so many of the problems that have been plaguing people for so long that now we're entering into a new era of problems, which is these mental health issues that have, that are, that are really plaguing the nation, um, in a really bad way. So, uh, it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, that makes sense, but it's not like comforting, <laughs> you know what I mean? To know that, that it has that big of a, uh, an impact on, on your mental health. 
and uh, and things like that. However, I'm not going to spend too much time on the mental health side because that's probably the part that everybody watching this was like, yeah, no duh, Travis, of course it's going to lead to, you know, depression and, and, uh, and suicide and anxiety and those things. But loneliness can also affect your bank account and the economy at large. This is wild. A lack of social connection can have significant economic costs to individuals, communities, and society. Among older adults, social isolation alone accounts for an estimated $6.7 billion in excess Medicare spending annually. Um, and uh, And then beyond direct healthcare spending, loneliness and isolation are associated with lower academic achievement and worse performance at work. It's actually affecting your money. You know, obviously, obviously if, if you're not performing well at work, that's going to directly correlate to like your career path, your trajectory, um, how many promotions you might get, an increase in salary, your your desire to even try to negotiate a salary bump or or find a new opportunity that might be able to pay you a little bit more money. Like this is literally affecting your personal bank account and your net worth. Um and the businesses that are employing you. In the U.S., stress-related absenteeism attributed to loneliness costs employers an estimated $154 billion every year. So the impact of social connection not only affects individuals, but also the communities uh, that they live in. Social connection is important social determinant of health and more broadly of community well-being, including population health, community resilience with natural hazards strike, community safety, economic prosperity, and and, and a representative government. So this is one that you probably didn't even think about, but social isolation, loneliness, it's affecting your actual bank account. It's affecting your money. It's putting less dollars into your pocket uh, because it is affecting your desire to go do things. It is uh, it is uh, fueling the bad habits in your life rather than uh, energizing the good habits in your life. Um, and it's all because of loneliness. Um, so that one might get your attention a little bit more, even than the mental health side. If it's not mental health, it's money. You know what I mean? If we can all agree on something, we're all looking for more money. Um, uh, so mental health money. Uh, but this was the, this was the one where I was just, I was, I was genuinely blown away. I I did not know that, that it could have this type of effect. Um, loneliness can affect your physical health. The lack of social connection poses a significant risk for individual health and longevity. Loneliness and social isolation increase the risk for premature death by 26 and 29% respectively. More broadly, lacking social connection can increase the risk for premature death as much as smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. Yeah, that was a pause on purpose. 15 cigarettes a day. That it, It's more dangerous than 15 cigarettes a day. That's a mind-blowing stat to me. On your physical health, not just your mental health, your physical health, it is worse for you than smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. Like That's something that we've all agreed for a really long time is really bad and that probably none of us should do. And yeah, there's still a lot of people that do it, but especially in the US, it's almost like almost like a shameful activity. Like people would like people would people would rather you have like murdered somebody than uh, see you smoking a cigarette um, indoors or something like that. Like it is something that we've all agreed that like, hey, probably probably shouldn't do that. But loneliness is worse for your physical health. And we're not talking about it at all. And, uh, and we're not trying to do anything about it. And if, and if we feel those feelings, we were, you know, we're society kind of encourages us to just, you know, shove them deep down and, you know, Hey, people in the world are experiencing quote unquote real problems. And you are worried about these champagne problems and you shouldn't have to worry about those problems because other people have worse problems than you have. Okay. It doesn't mean that you can't address the problems that are in your life. And this is obviously a really big problem. In addition, poor or insufficient social connection is associated with increased risk of disease, including a 29% increased risk of heart disease and a 32% increased risk of stroke. Furthermore, it's associated with increased risk for anxiety, depression, and dementia, which we've kind of already, uh, or dementia, and which we've kind of already talked about. Um, and additionally, the lack of social connection may increase susceptibility to viruses and respiratory illness. This is your physical health that we're talking about, uh, that, that just social isolation or, or feelings of internal loneliness, uh, can actually just genuinely affect in a detrimental way, your physical health. A 2022 study found that when people were asked how close 
they felt to others emotionally. Only 39% of, of adults in the U.S. said that they felt very connected to others. An important indicator of this declining social connection is an increase in the proportion of Americans experiencing loneliness. Recent surveys have found that approximately half of U.S. adults report experiencing loneliness. Half. 50% with some of the highest rates among young adults. Multiple other studies indicate that loneliness and isolation are more widespread than many of the other major health issues of the day, including smoking, diabetes, obesity, and with comparable and with comparable levels of risk to health and premature death. Despite such high prevalence, less than 20% of individuals who often or always feel lonely or isolated recognize it as a major problem. So it is more prevalent and more dangerous than, uh, than smoking, diabetes, and obesity, yet fewer people find it to be something that they actually have to address they, they don't think it's a problem. So that, that's the whole thing about like some of these other things that are a little bit more obvious, right? Diabetes, obviously bad. Um, uh, really, really bad, honestly, though, like alarmingly bad, uh, how bad diabetes is. Obesity, not good. Smoking, not good. A lot of these things we all know are not good. But then more people are experiencing loneliness and social isolation, but less people understand that that's actually more dangerous than all the other things that I just mentioned, because it doesn't have the same, you know, uh, alarm bells going off in our heads um, as some of these other things have, have have done over the last, you know, couple of decades. Um, according to a 2020 consensus study report by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, they probably know a thing or two um, about how to run studies. <laughs> um, uh, they said over four decades of research has produced robust evidence that lacking social connection and in particular scoring high on measures of social isolation is associated with a significantly increased risk for early death from all causes. An increase in all cause mortality just by being socially isolated or feeling internal uh, feelings of loneliness. This is it, to, like I said, it was, it was remarkable to me. It, it's mind blowing to me. There are not more people talking about this. Like th th this is literally our generation smoking. Like we look back, you know, 50, 60 years ago, it's, we look at how many people were smoking. Like everybody smoked, you know what I mean? Like a, a pastor would get done preaching and light up, you know what I mean? Like the, the people in, in, in office would light up. You'd light up in restaurants. Everybody smoked all the time because nobody knew how detrimental it was to their health. And now we look at the data and we look at what those people are doing. We're like, man, that's crazy. How could you do this for so long? That's going to be us in 50 years talking about like loneliness and isolation and like all of these technological advances that have seemed to make life easier, seemed to make life better, seemed to make us more connected. The, the, the social media that we have, uh, Zoom calls and, and replacing um, in-person work with virtual work, all these things that we view as things that are, pro are are progressing society and they're going to take us to new heights. And there are a lot of great things that come out of those. Don't get me wrong. We, I use a lot of those tools every single day. Um, but... We're getting away from something that is a basic human need, like the desire for human connection and social connectivity is something that's been hardwired into our biology for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, um, all the way back to the hunter gatherers uh, that were wandering the, the, the plains and trying to find where their next meal was going to come from. It was the community that kept them together, that kept them alive. Like we are biologically hardwired to, to, to need and thrive off of a, a, a con connection, connection with ourselves, connection with the, the, those around us that we, that we love. So, um, just ignoring it is not going to make it go away. Uh, more recent estimates based on synthesizing data across 148 studies with an average of seven and a half years of follow-up. Okay. 148 studies, average of seven and a half years of follow-up suggests that social connection increases the odds of survival from all causes by 50%. 50% increase in survival chances uh, from all causes. Indeed, the effects of social connection, isolation, and loneliness on mortality are comparable and in some cases greater than those of many other risk factors, including lifestyle factors, smoking, alcohol consumption, physical inactivity, uh, traditional clinical risks, uh, risk factors like high blood pressure, body mass index, cholesterol levels, um, environmental factors like air pollution, and clinical interventions, the flu vaccine, high blood pressure medication, rehabilitation, and stuff like that. So for those of you who like to smoke, like to eat a bunch of food and like to drink a bunch of alcohol, um, in areas with, you know, bad air quality, um, and you don't like to work out at all, like this might actually be good news for you. Okay. Because lacking social connection, I'm looking at a graph here too. So maybe we can throw it on the screen. Um, lacking social connection 
is about 20% more dangerous than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It is about 100%, so about twice as dangerous as drinking six alcoholic beverages daily. Daily, six drinks a day. It looks to be about almost three times uh, as dangerous as physical inactivity, uh, almost four times as dangerous as obesity, and almost uh, six times more dangerous than air pollution. Um, (laughs) Just from lacking social connection. Like I said, mental health to me, that made complete sense. Loneliness being a source of like depression, suicidal thoughts, um, uh, anxiety. Uh, It's a loop that continues to feed itself. But uh, man, I was not expecting to see this much data uh, and research that suggests that lacking social connection is more dangerous, significantly more dangerous than, than smoking or drinking or not working out or being obese, um, diabetes, um, heart disease, like all of these things are, um, are, uh, dwarfed by social isolation and loneliness. And, and think about it for a second. There's some of this that makes a lot of sense. Um, first of all, because we're hardwired to be that way, like biologically, like we already talked about, um, but also the largest study or the, the longest study rather of, of humans and happiness was conducted by Harvard and the evidence that they found about, Hey, what makes a happy life, a fulfilled life, a happy life. The, the best evidence that they found was the relationships around, uh, the people in the study. So, uh, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about necessarily physical health, even as much. It was all about combating loneliness. It was about how happy and fulfilled are these people with the people that are closest to them? Um, how much enjoyment, how much enrichment did they get from the from the relationships that they built in their life? And that was the number one indicator of happiness by far. You can look up that study anytime. So it makes a little bit of sense. Um, I, like I said, the, the physical side was just one, one that I was just like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe some of these things. Um, so it's a problem. It affects your, uh, your, your mental health. It affects your bank account. It affects your physical health. And unfortunately it is not getting any better. Okay. So objective measures of social exposure obtained from 20, uh, 2003 to 2020 find that social isolation measured by the average time spent alone increased from 2003, uh, to, Uh, so from, so 2003, it was 285 minutes a day or 142 hours a month. And by 2020, it was 333 minutes a day or 166 hours a month, which represents an increase of 24 hours per month spent alone from 2003 to 2020. Now, obviously some of the data is a little bit skewed in 2020 for obvious reasons. Uh, we were forced to be socially isolated for quite some time. Um, but since 2020, those numbers really haven't gone down much, uh, because, because it, 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 it accelerated a lot of the stuff that we're experiencing now, which is like a lot of companies are still working virtually when maybe they shouldn't be, um, or at least they should entertain some version of like hybrid work or something like that. Uh, and then it, it, it forced more people onto social platforms to connect over zoom to, uh, to connect on social when socials of so social media is a very bad way to connect with people to actually gain human connection, maybe connect, meaning like connect for the first time or like be exposed to somebody's content or something like that. Sure. But like actual human social connection, it's not going to, it's not going to be solved by social media. Um, okay. So at the same time, social participation across several types of relationships has steadily declined. For instance, the amount of time respondents engaged with friends socially in person decreased from 2003 from 60 minutes a day or 30 hours a month to 2020 at 20 minutes a day and 10 hours a month, which is a uh, decrease of 20 hours per month spent engaging with friends. But this is even like 20 hours per month. Um, that's alarming to me. It's the percentage as a whole. It's 30 hours a month down to 10 hours a month. Like that's like what is 67% decrease in 17 years. Um, and then it says the, the, the decline is starkest for young people ages 15 to 24 for this age group time spent in person with friends has 
reduced by nearly 70% over almost two decades from roughly 150 minutes per day in 2003 to 40 minutes per day in 2020. Um, and then the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated trends in declining social participation. Obviously that plays a huge factor. Um, but that's a good word to use accelerated. It wasn't like artificial and then it got back to normal. It just, it just pushed everything a little bit further, a little bit faster. Um, and you know, it's not like we've gone back to pre pandemic, um, stats. Uh, the number of close friendships has also declined over several decades among people not reporting loneliness or social isolation. Nearly 90% have three or more confidence among people not reporting loneliness or social isolation. Nearly 90% have three or f three or more confidants yet almost half of Americans, 49% in 2021 reported having three or fewer close friends, which is only about a quarter reported the same in 1990. So in 1990, 27% reported having three or fewer close friends. And now it's 49% um, have reported having three or fewer close friends. So social connection continued to decline during the COVID-19 pandemic with one study finding a 16% decrease in network size from June of 19 to June of 2020 among participants, 16% in a single year. Again, obviously, some of that has recovered. It definitely has not recovered enough. Um, and we'll throw in another graph in there on my Instagram. So here's the here's the takeaways from this. It's a problem. It's a big problem. It can affect your mental health very negatively. It can affect your uh, bank account negatively and the macroeconomic environment at, at, as a whole. And it can uh, affect your actual physical health more than drinking, more than smoking, more than obesity. Um, just being lonely, like reported feelings of internal loneliness or actual objective measures of external social isolation. Um, they are, they, it's a big deal and, uh, and it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better. And that's, that's kind of the, the alarming piece of this, um, like stark drop-offs. When you look at some of these graphs, just like, okay, it's, it's going, it's going. And then it's just like a cliff, uh, where it takes a dive over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. Um, so like I said, social media has a lot to do with that. I think, um, COVID obviously had, uh, had played a part in, in accelerating that process. Um, and now I think it's time for more people to start talking about it and, uh, or we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to start seeing these effects like over a lifetime, it's going to really, really negatively affect our entire generation. Um, even though we have access to Western medicine and, you know, we're removing a lot of diseases off of the table and things like that, that used to kill people all the time. We're now inventing our own, uh, which is, which is loneliness, which, and, and it's a crazy thing because we, we don't really have any excuses for it anymore. It's like, we we were, we're more connected than we've ever been, but we're less connected than we've ever been. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's a crazy dichotomy to me. Um, so our time for this episode is coming to an end. I know this is kind of somewhat of a nihilistic episode because we didn't really talk too much about solutions and what we can do. Um, but I wanted to start here just to give you a heads up that this is a real problem. And this is why, uh, this is why I'm going to start adding in these solo shows, uh, to the show because it wasn't enough for me just to go interview people and show like, Hey, I know how to go out here and make friends. I also wanted to be able to go, um, share with all of you, all of, again, the practices, the tips, the, the explanations, the, uh, the lessons, the how to's everything that I've learned from in seven years of doing a show about networking relationships, friendships, um, and then the the volume of practice that's required in order to uh, connect an interview over, uh, let's say, five or six hundred people at this point. Almost, we're coming up on episode nine fifty. Um, so, uh, all the stuff that I've learned, I, I just I felt like I, I I had to just start sharing more of it um, here on the show. So, um, let me know. Uh, if you think that that's a good idea or not, um, I'd be curious to hear uh, what you guys are thinking. So um, if you're experiencing loneliness or social isolation, uh, you need to take it seriously and you need to you need to find some help. So that's what we're going to do now on the show. So tune in next week and every week after that um, to hear uh, what we can do about some of these alarming stats going forward. Um, and we're going to keep talking about the skills, the actions, the habits, um, the lessons, anything else that will help ensure that you are not on a, on the on the wrong side um, of the these alarming statistics. 
um, that I that I was reading about today. Um, in an effort to prove this, by the way, I'm also going to open up my calendar. Okay, so uh, I set aside 15 minute slots on certain days of the week to connect with anybody and everybody who is watching or listening to this show. You can find that at travischapel.com slash chat, travischapel, C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L uh, dot com slash chat. And you, know, you can sign up for just a free 15 minute call with me. I just want to get to know you um, and see how see how we can you know help each other be less isolated, be a little bit less lonely. Um, it's going to it's going to take a group effort. So um, if you want to get to know me a little bit better, um, then thanks for tuning into this episode and continue to tune in to make friends with Travis um, on the solo shows here on the show. Uh, but also travischapel.com slash chat. Set up a call and I look forward to talking to you really soon. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out. Remember to leave every relationship better than you found it.